भगवते वासुदेवाय तपस्यम दयास्मृति दयादीवृत्ति काम ईहा मदस्तृष्णस्तंभ आशीर्दुख मदोत्साहो यश प्रीतिर हास्यम वीर बलोद्यम क्रोधो लोभो नृत हिंसा याचना दंभ क्लमकली शोकमोह विषादार्थी निद्राशाभिजम सत्वस्जसस्ताय तमस तमसुपूर्वश वृत्तो वर्णिता प्राय सन्नीपातमथो शृणु ट्रांसलेशन mind and sense control tolerance discrimination sticking to one's prescribed duty truthfulness mercy careful study of the past and future satisfaction in any condition generosity renunciation of sense gratification faith in the spiritual master being embarrassed at improper action charity simplicity humbleness and satisfaction within oneself are qualities of the mode of goodness material desire great endeavor audacity dissatisfaction even in gain false pride praying for material advancement considering oneself different and better than others sense gratification rash eagerness to fight a fondness for hearing oneself praised the tendency to ridicule others advertising one's own prowess and justifying one's actions by one's strength are qualities of the mode of passion intolerant anger stinginess speaking without scriptural authority violent hatred living as a parasite hypocrisy chronic fatigue quarrel lamentation delusion unhappiness depression sleeping too much false expectations fear and laziness constitute the major qualities of the mode of goodness of ignorance now please hear about the combination of three these three modes shamo damas tatik sheksha tapas satyam dayasmiti hi tushtis tyago spriha shraddha fir dayadi sanirvritaha nirvriti hi kama iha maras krishna stambha ashir bidha sukham madot saho yasha prithir hasyam viryam balojamaha krodho lobho nritam hingsa yachna yachna dambha klama kalihi shokamo ho vishadarti nidrasha bhir anujamaha satvasya rajasas chaitas tam tamasas chanupur vishaha vittayo varnita praya sanipa tamato shunu so we're hearing here about the uh, three modes of nature atri bhir gunamaya bhavaya rebi sarva midam jagat mohitam nabijanati mamebya paramapya the whole world is bewildered by these three qualities of nature tri bhir gunamaya 
What is that? Sri Bhirguna Mayar. Mukona Mayar Thai Vair. Ebi Sarvam Idam Jagat. The whole world is bewildered um, by these three qualities. Guna means qualities, three qualities of nature. Or guna also means rope. So everyone is bound by these ropes of material nature. On the docks they have these thick ropes where three ropes are twined up together for holding the ship tight. So these three modes of material nature are tightly binding uh, the conditioned souls. Therefore, nabhijanati ma mebhya paramapiyam. Therefore, everyone is forgetting Krishna or not realizing that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Here the three uh, qualities are uh, described. Uh, what is that in Bhagavad Gita? Uh, hmm, let's see. Mateva Chamam Vid Mateva. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You're in the same territory. Let's get it all right. Ye chaiva sattvika bhava rajasas tamasas triye mateva mateva eveti tan vidhi mateshu nachaham teshu te mai these material modes of nature, uh, whatever there is, ye chayava sattvika bhava, whether it's in sattva guna, rajasa, uh, tamasastriye, or rajagun, tamagun, uh, mateva, chamam uh, It's coming from Krishna. Nachaham te shutevai. But I'm not seen there. Naham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samadhi. Krishna is everywhere. He's within. These gunas have their qualities. The qualities are activated by Krishna. Krishna is the active principle of the modes of material nature. We hear in second canto and elsewhere that these three modes were there where material nature was there, but it wasn't doing anything. It was inert. And then the Lord glances over material nature. Then everything's activated. Hmm. A machine, the machine is sitting there overnight doing nothing. In the morning the operator comes, presses the switch, pushes the button, and all of a sudden the machine is active doing so many things. Without that person, the machine sits. Uh, so without Krishna, Mayadyakshena, Adyaksha, he's the overseer or he d directly, just by seeing material nature, yo uh, aikshata, yo just by seeing, he creates activity. Uh, it's said that he impregnates material nature by his glance, uh, by seeing. That's not the usual way of creating pregnancy. But Krishna does it that way, just by seeing. Asa aikshata. That means angani yasya sakalendriya vrittimanti. All of his uh, senses are equally capable of doing uh, anything. He can see with his eyes, he can hear with his eyes, he can create pregnancy with his eyes. Uh, everything. Because his uh, transcendental form is absolute. So he uh, empowers material nature. Therefore it said, Daivihyesha gunumai, mamamaya virataya. It's a divine energy because empowered by Krishna. It may be the material energy, but even the material energy depends on the personality of Godhead in order to do its work. Uh, what is that? Shristi stiti pralaya sadhana shaktire kachaye bhyasya 
Bhuvanani Bibharti Durga. It's Chanarupa Mapiyasya Chachesta Tesa. Govindamadi Purusham Tamahan For creation, maintenance, destruction, material nature is acting, but in accordance with the will of Govinda, Krishna. Uh, material nature has no independent program. Uh, so, the typical qualities are described here, uh, as they're also described in the Bhagavad Gita, Samatama Tapa Shocham Kshanti Rajava Mevacha, Gyanam Vigyanam Ashtakyam Brahma Karma Shabhavatam. The Brahminical qualities are qualities of goodness. So the good qualities are described uh, control of the mind, control of the senses, tolerance, austerity, truthfulness, mercy, discrimination, uh, satisfaction. Detachment, freedom from material desires, faith, fear. Fear is described. How is fear done here? To be embarrassed at improper action. Uh, a person who's not embarrassed when he acts uh, wrongly uh, is uh, sick. There's a sort of modern psychological thing, um, notion says that you should never feel uh, embarrassed or, or ashamed. To feel, to feel shame is some sort of no-no. Uh, but a person who never feels shame is psychopathic. You, you pick someone's pocket, you, you uh, knock over an old lady, you do whatever you want. And then you, you don't feel anything because uh, you don't want to feel bad about yourself. This is called uh, foolishness. So a good quality of a person in the mode of goodness is that when he does something wrong, he feels bad about it. Uh, that's the normal uh, and healthy mentality. That when I feel good, that when I do something good, yes, I feel good. And when I do something wrong, I feel ashamed or I feel bad. Uh, that's the natural. Uh, but the person who's a fool, uh, no, I never do anything. It was the right thing to do. He's got a whole script of self-justification why whatever he does is right, or at least not wrong, or understandable at the very least. Uh, but a person in the mode of goodness, when he acts wrongly, thinks, I've done something very wrong. Maharaj Pariksha, we find he uh, garlanded a sage with a snake. So he was, uh, wasn't given a reception, wasn't given any water. Uh, he's the king, after all. So, all right, you give me a cold reception, tit for tat. But then, uh, as he was returning to his kingdom, he thought, I did something very wrong. I've insulted a sage. Uh, because he was uh, properly situated, he understood that. No, I shouldn't have done that. So, Huir, uh, Daya, Mercy, Adihi, and so on. And Svanivrittihi is what? Self-sacrifice? See. Yeah, taking one's pleasure from within. Yonto, yonta, sukonta, ra, rama, stutanta, jyoti, rebaja. Anybody want to eat? So yogi, brahma, nirvana. Then, brahma, bhuta, yatatma, vana. So these are the qualities in goodness. These qualities, uh, for the person who knows them, uh, can be seen uh, right away. Just as they're described in, in the Bhagavatam as being like flags on a chariot. 
Arjuna is known as uh, Kapidwaja because he has Hanuman on his chariot flag. Similarly, the other warriors have other distinctive flags. So you know, here's Arjuna, here's Yudhisthira, here's Bhim, here's Duryodhana, here's uh, Shalva, here's this one, that one, uh, by seeing the flag. Or uh, here you have a license plate, MH, everyone knows you're from Maharashtra. UP, everyone knows you're from UP. Uh, so the license plates, uh, or the ships, flies an Indian flag, American flag, this flag, that flag. So you see right away, this is what the ship is. So people are displaying their mode of nature by their qualities. Uh, you see humility, pridelessness, faith, knowledge, detachment. Um, then you see, oh yes, this is goodness. And you see uh, intense desire, intense endeavor, never uh, dissatisfaction no matter what. I need more, I need more. And the flag is uh, Rajagun. And Dampo, Darpo, Bhiman is... The, uh, anger and, and foolishness, laziness, uh, stupidity, and tamaga. So by, uh, it's practical. Even one devotee did a psychological assessment, made a psychological assessment tool by which, uh, published in an academic journal, by which one could psychologically assess someone according to the qualities of the modes of material nature. There's a set of questions, and at the end you can see a Tamagun and Rajagun. And of course they come in mixtures. Kama iha, kama iha, badas trishna, Tamba Asir Bidas who come. Madot Saho Yasha Pritir Hasyam Viryam Balodyamaha. These are the qualities of passion. Stambha uh, means false pride. Ashihi praying to various demigods for material uh, gains. Bida, Bida means a lug. To think that one is someone special, someone you know, unique in his class or whatever you want to say. Krodha lobha mritam hingsa, that's the next one. Madotsaha, kind of intoxication, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Enthusiasm and courage based on being intoxicated. He gets his courage from a bottle. And Yasha Pratihi, he's very fond of hearing his own glories. The person in the mode of goodness or devotee is always eager to hear about Krishna's glories, or even to hear about the glories of other devotees. But the person in passion, when he hears about the glories of others, it's like uh, a sting for him, because it's not his glories, his competitor. Hasyam, to laugh at others, ridicule them. Viryam, how great I am. Ujjamaha, Paurusham, to be proud of one's own strength. It's all happening because of me and my determination and my skill and my learning and my this, my that. Everything's because of my power. Yes. Then, Krodha, Lobha, Anritam, uh, lying, himsa, uh, violence, yachna, yeah, 
begging. And people in the mode of ignorance are just standing in the street begging. Dambha. Klamaha. Klamaha. Fatigue. It's just dull, indolent, quarrelsome. Shokamoha, uh, lamentation and bewilderment. Vishada, same thing. So in this way, uh, the modes of ignorance, mode of ignorance is manifest. So all of these material modes are found in the material world. Some similar qualities are found in the spiritual world. The cowherd boys are advertising, I'm better than you are, I can beat you. Hmm? There's, uh, everything's there in the spiritual world uh, also. But in its pure form, in its transcendental form. Hmm? Uh, when, the, when any such qualities are found in Krishna, then they're transcendental. Lord Balaram becomes intoxicated. Uh, sometimes he drinks a little too much of some beverage made with honey, and his eyes start to roll. And uh, so Even the Jamuna, no, I won't come. I wouldn't follow your orders. You're drunk. Uh, you may think so, but I'm still the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I can uh, pull you out of your bed, out of your, uh, yes, out of your course. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transcendental in everything he does. If he's dancing with other men's wives, it appears to be lust. But no, it's a transcendental manifestation of his pleasure potency. It's not the same thing. Uh, when Krishna is angry, uh, even if you think that uh, he, he does, he becomes angry. He appears as Lord Nishingadev. And he's so angry that even uh, Brahma, even Lakshmi can't calm him down. Uh, but he's... Uh, because he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's unlimitedly angry. A person in the material world gets angry to some extent, maybe enormously. You can't calm him down either. But he, who is he? He's some little punk. He, who cares about how angry he is? Even if he's a king and he gets angry, uh, he'll be finished in a short time. But Krishna's anger, when he becomes angry, is unlimited. Uh, so this is Krishna. No limit to his transcendental uh, qualities. Uh, and they're reflected only in the material world. Of course, the mode of goodness is the closest reflection of the spiritual nature. Therefore, the spiritual uh, world is called Vishuddha Sattva. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. In the spiritual world, goodness it prevails. But it, that, it's the kind of goodness not found in the material world. In the material world, goodness is adulterated by passion, by ignorance, by something. Uh, but here, in the spiritual world, pure goodness prevails. So the holy name of Krishna is on the spiritual platform, Vishuddha Sattva. The form of the Lord is on the spiritual platform. The qualities of the Lord are on the spiritual platform. Devotional service to the Lord is on the spiritual platform. Therefore, mamchayo vyabhacharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samadhichayatan brahmavuraya kopate. By devotional service, one transcends the three modes of material nature. Hare Krishna. Any questions? How long are we supposed to go till? Nine. That's now. But we'll take it. Nine fifteen. Okay. Any questions? Yes.
Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. you very much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Uh, <clears throat> my question is that these days, in the modern times, the left-wing intellectuals, the left-wing intellectuals, they are systematically trying to uh, denigrate the scriptures and the ancient traditions and culture by saying that it is backward, it is exploitative. So, you know, they are uh, trying to push forward the qualities of passion and ignorance in the society. They want to? They, want, they are pushing forward the you know, qualities of passion and ignorance in the society by denigrating the uh, culture and the scriptures. So the left-wing intellectuals, they are doing all of this. So how to, uh, in the current society, you know, uh, deal with these things? Well, of course, it's case by case. Our generic statement is, Shastra Vidimutsri Javartate Kama Karana Karataha uh, you may intellectualize all you want and you may forge your own path, but we can tell you in advance what the result will be. You won't be happy. Uh, you won't attain perfection. You won't even be happy. And what to speak of going to any, you don't even accept that there's a supreme destination. So you'll just live your uh, meaningless life in this world. Uh, ask them, what is the highest purpose of life? This was uh, the question asked by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Ramananda Roy. It's like your, your litmus test or your, your, your quick way to get to the, to the point. Only two questions. What's the goal? How do you get there? Sadhana and sadhya. What's, what's your, your, your ultimate objective and how do you get there? So ask them, what is your ultimate objective? You're an intellectual. What is the ultimate purpose of human society? Or what is the ultimate purpose of your life? Ask them. Our ultimate purpose is to be engaged in the service of the absolute truth, the personality of God. We have a clear purpose and we have a clear method. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and a whole science to go with it. That's our program. Now, what's your ultimate goal of life? Before we start talking about this, that bottom line, what is your ultimate objective? Okay, we'll make a prediction based on Bhagavad Gita. Kamo Paboga Parama Etava Nishchita. Your ultimate goal of life is to satisfy your senses. Individually and corporately. If you're selfish, you want to satisfy your own senses. If you're generous, you want to satisfy your senses in, or generous, so-called generous, in conjunction with others. Have you any higher goal? And they express it in some, some nice ways to achieve, to enable everyone to achieve his own full potential. Potential for what? For sense gratification. Uh, to ensure that everyone has uh, full freedom and full choice for what? Sense gratification. You know, have you any higher objective than sense gratification? You know, before we talk about anything else. Is that all right? And since you have no God, no God, then for you, the world is just an arbitrary set of ones and zeros. You could just take all these material forces which constitute ex existence, material entities, and reduce them down to ones and zeros. Uh, just make a binary description. So your life is one, zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Or your wife, she's one, zero, one, one, zero. And your wife dead is zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. What's the difference? Why is your wife living better than your wife dead? Since it all reduces down to just strings of, of binary numbers, why do we place a higher value on this one than that one? There's ultimately no reason to. 
So your ethics, your morality, your purpose in life, your relationships, it's all arbitrary. It's just, as they say, socially constructed, which means arbitrary. Instead of arbitrarily deciding on what's right and wrong, you all get together as a group and arbitrarily decide what's right and what's wrong. That doesn't make it less arbitrary. And it ultimately has no meaning. That's your situation. Um, and we're glad that you're intellectual about it. Some other question? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the class. Uh, Maharaj, uh, for Visad Arthi, there are two uh, meaning is given. Mm -hmm. For Visad Arthi, the? in the translation, Visad Arthi, there are two Vish meanings. Vishokadi? Visad Arthi. Mm -hmm. Unhappiness and false humility. Uh, Vishokadi, I think. No. There are two meanings, unhappiness and false humility. So, mm. uh, Where are you looking? Uh, oh, Vishar, uh, Vishadarti. Vishad. Vishad means uh, lamentation. Arjuna Vishad Yoga Nama Pratimogya. Vishad. Arjuna Vishad. Uh, he's lamenting. Uh, Vishad RT and RT. Mm. How is the whole thing put together? Yeah, false humility, yes. So, can you define false humility? False humility. I'm useless. My life is no purpose. I'm just a fool. <laughs> And so he spends his time in the pub drinking because his life is so terrible and my life is useless and I'm, I'm good for nothing. Everyone knows I'm good for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's false humility. That's art. Some other question? Yes. Microphone. Hare Krishna. Last time His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj explains uh, in Bhagavadam class, uh, I am the controller, I am the enjoyer. This, this quality is I have seen in various temple that uh, some temple in commander in mode of passion, ignorance, some temple, temple president is thinking I am the controller, enjoyer, like that, Maharaj explained. So, how to the devotee handle such situation? And Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If it's us, if I'm this I'm the controller, I'm the enjoyer, I'm perfect, powerful, and happy, then I should chant Hare Krishna to purify my heart. And if it's somebody else who's stomping around uh, as the controller and the enjoyer, then I can chant Hare Krishna so that I'll be able to tolerate. <laughs> Is that all right? After all, we're recruiting from the material world. It's not that we just go around looking for everyone who's factually perfect and invite them to join. Uh, it's a hospital, so it's not surprising that people, even having entered and having undergone some treatment, are not completely healthy. It's to be expected. If you make it that all the members have to be before they can join, you know, you fill out a questionnaire you, and you find out that he has all good qualities and no bad qualities, then he can join. You know, you'll have a very small society. Some other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, in the society, there are so many disturbances, means the other religion, they are 
empowering and they are just forcefully they are converting the sanatan dharma and simple people actually so it is whose duty to uh, maintain the religion it is government or society or individual who should act on this actually who should act on this who should retain the who, who should protect the religion actually? first of the, first of all the, the the members of the religion should protect it protect it means follow it you know they're converting people from sanatan dharma what sanatan dharma <laughs> gambling intoxication meat eating illicit sex sanatan dharma or simply you know sense gratification and this is sanatan dharma no krishna ishro ham ham bhogi siddho ham balavan sukhi but it's sanatan everything sanatan dharma because I'm this body and this is my designation. Saiva Gokara, he's a fool. So we don't really, we're not that impressed that he's a Hindu fool instead of a Christian fool. And if he becomes a Christian fool instead of a Hindu fool, what's it to us? Uh, or a, a, an Islamic fool. A fool is a fool. Uh -huh. You become Krishna conscious. We don't care about your external uh, sanatan dharma minus Krishna. Shamebhi kevalam dharma svanustita pum sam vishvakshena katasu yet no pada yet yadidatim. Shamebhi kevalam. Your sanatan dharma minus Krishna is a waste of time. And if someone convinces you to join some other religion and you become God conscious, I don't know that that's worse. Uh, just to make a, a platform, no, we're, we're the Hindus, we're better, it's our country, blah, blah, on the basis of this false identification with the body is not um, the suitable engagement for the living being. It's not actually, it's not Sanatan and it's not Dharma. That's the problem with their sanatan dharma. It's not dharmic and it's not sanatan. So the best thing is that you convert from your sanatan dharma to actual sanatan dharma. <laughs> That's our mission. We're not joining this political party, that political party, this social movement, that social movement. Oh, we're worried about these people converting those people to this, that. You become Krishna conscious. Uh, we're not international society for Hindu I mean Krishna consciousness. And that will then automatically everything else will be there. Just like our we have so many devotees all over the world, they're Christians, they're Hindus, they're Muslims, they're this, that. But they follow actually the principles of Sanatana Dharma because they've accepted the lotus feet of Krishna as everything. And you're making a big show of Sanatana Dharma, Sanatana Dharma, and waving a flag, but you're not actually following the principles, nor do you understand the purpose of the whole thing. And therefore you're wasting your time and your money and creating communal disturbance while you're at it. Now, of course, these principles of Varnashram Dharma, which is real sana, have value, and therefore they should be instituted by the public leaders, by the governments, by the teachers, by everyone. But that's not a secular thing. Not that the, the Brahmins, just like we have Brahmins, it's not that there's only uh, Hindu. There's intellectuals in every community. Uh, there's powerful uh, Kshatriya kind of people in every community. There's Shudras galore in every community. So, but it should be organized. Now, that's not a secular thing, Hindu, Christian. Uh, there should, society should be organized. Doctors should be doing medicine. Lawyers should be doing law. Street sweepers should be sweeping the streets. Everything should be properly organized. That's a different thing. 
quarter after nine. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. RG Media YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe.